Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to discuss current affairs of 24th November 2023. So first of all, we are going to see PDF of Delhi edition of The Hindu and we are going to point out which are the articles relevant from our examination and later on I will be going to give you the perspectives like in how many dimensions we can think about that topic. So we can connect single topic with the different multiple subjects. So that approach will be very helpful to write a very good essay in multi-dimensional manner. And even that approach will be helpful to write mains answer. Because nowadays you can check your previous preliminaries and mains questions also. Their UPSC is not connecting a single subject, okay, not giving a question on a single subject, but it is connecting with the different subjects. There, this kind of approach is very important. Just reading the title and whatever they're giving each and word, reading in the article, it is not at all useful for UPSC. It is not at all the way to prepare for current affairs. So, if you see the title, then you have to get perspectives and you have to interconnect with the subjects. And if there is any research needed, you have to open Google and you have to do some research and after that you have to make notes. Okay, so this is the way to prepare current affairs, not only for UPSC, for any other competitive examinations. So without wasting any time, let us see the first article. So this is the front page. So first article is Governor holds no veto power over bills, says Supreme Court. So we are studying this topic of powers of governor from last one to one and a half month. Yes or no? Yes. So here what Supreme Court said. So Punjab government filed a petition in Supreme Court. Supreme Court now came up with a judgment. So because of this, this is a news. So which are the things that you have to think? So first one is who is governor and governor post is called as gubernatorial post. So why governor post is called as a gubernatorial post? So we can say governor post is nothing but central government agent. So governor represents central government agent in the state. So, through the post of governor, center government or central government or center is controlling the states. And whenever governor feels that there is constitutional measure breakdown, then governor can write a letter to president and president can impose president's rule in the state. And apart from that, here you have to see <coughs> constitutional provisions. You have to see the constitutional provisions regarding the powers of governor. And especially Article 200 and Article 201 <coughs> or 201, it is important, which talks about functions of governor. governor regarding passage of bill you can get a direct question like so which of the following article deals with the powers of governor so in that way also you can get a question so all these things are very important and you can also connect why this governor post is in use like what is the issue that is nothing but withholding of bills so why it is in use? Because of withholding of bills, which is passed by state legislature, but governor is not giving assent. So all these things are very important regarding this topic. <clears throat> Our next topic is L80. L80 that is Lashkar E Taiba. Okay. L-80 commander accomplice killed in Jammu and Kashmir encounter. So one good news here is 
leader of this let okay let command he was killed in encounter that to in punch and next topic here is first woman judge in supreme court that is fatima baby she died so here in interview you can get a question like so do you heard about this fatima baby so what is the role played by her so actually she is the first woman to pass law that to 100% in all subjects and she became the first woman judge of supreme court and finally she lost life at age of 96 and here you can see like what is the role played by this fatima bibi in women empowerment in women empowerment and even you can see this topic under judiciary especially supreme court so here there is a chance of getting question regarding appointment process of judges of supreme court and next important topic here is who that is world health organization asks china for more information on rise in illness pneumonia clusters okay so here this article is talking about rising of pneumonia cases in china and who is asking that so what are the reasons behind this so here you have to know what is this pneumonia so it is caused by which organism and what is the treatment and what is the signs and symptoms so this topic is important from your science and technology and even we have international organization which had been involved who so here you can also think about what is the role of who so what is the relevance of who in the present scenario so all these things are very important <clears throat> that's all this is the front page and if you move on to city page i found nothing nothing much important and you can move on to this second that is the states page so here you can see one article that is dalit family denied entry into temple high court refuses to squash criminal plea against accused so here this article says that entry of dalits into temple so in modern history so you might have studied about temple entry movements yes or no temple entry movements so you have to revise this topic called as temple entry movements and who, which which leader who led that temple entry movements and <clears throat> from polity point of view you can connect this topic with untouchability so even in our fundamental rights so there is one article which talking about abolition of untouchability so even though these fundamental rights are guaranteed rights till now in this 21st century also we are seeing that denial of temple entry <clears throat> so these people who are belonging to this dalit sc and st so they will be protected by a civil law that is nothing but sc st atrocities act so what is that act that you have to remember and we can also connect this topic with ethics so if you are a dc of that so and so district where this incident happened like denial of entry of entry for this dalit people to the temple so what are the steps that you are going to take <clears throat> so what are the steps that you are going to take to prevent this type of incidents in future and in the present what are the steps that you are going to take and how are you going to ensure the temple entry for all okay so in this way you can connect this article with ethics modern history and polity point of view and next topic is here you can see meera bai okay actually narendra modi he gave this meera bai image okay on this meera bai janmotsav so in our history in bhakti movement in this topic called as bhakti movement you will be studying about this meera bai 
Is that no? She is a devotee of Lord Krishna. So you have to know about Mirabai and you have to revise uh, some important facts regarding this Mirabai. So there is a high chance of getting question regarding this Mirabai. And which is a musical instrument used by her and what she did, what she contributed to society. So all these things are very important. And if you move on here, you can see an article that is political rivals come together to hold Kambala. So actually, this Kambala is related to bull taming event. It is related to bull taming event. So in this bull taming event, we have two. First one is Kambala. Next one is Jallikattu. So there is a lot of difference. So in this Kambala we are using two bulls, but in Jalnikattu they will use one bull. So have you seen this uh, movie of Kantara? So in that Kantara they shown this Kambala only. Okay. So this article is important, especially from your art and culture point of view. At David you have to see what are the issues regarding this bull taming events. Okay. You can leave this spotlight, you can leave this metro plus. And in this editorial page, there is article regarding the impact of violence on child's mind. So this article which is talking about Israel-Palestine conflict which is going on now. So how this violence and how this conflict which is going to change the young minds. So what kind of mental or we can say like psychological impact. So what kind of mental or psychological impact that is seen in the minds of the children that you have to think about and please let me know. And next topic it is about 5 trillion economy but for whom? So recently in campaigning in election campaigning our prime minister he talked about Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana and he said that we are going to extend this scheme of providing free food grains for people for next five years because we don't want anyone to sleep hungry so in the same context our prime minister here he also said that we are going to become dollar five trillion economy soon India is going to be the third most largest economy in the world. So here we have to see on this topic like, so what is this dollar five trillion economy and how we are going to achieve this? So these things are very important. And if you move on, in this text and context, there is an article it is regarding COP28 and India's equity demand. So here we have to see this what is this COP28 and what are the demands that are made by India because now there is urgent public importance like climate change is happening and because of this climate change, worst climate weather events that we are facing. For example, you can take heat waves, floods, droughts, unseasonal rainfalls, melting of glaciers, right, heat waves, okay. So forest fires, so all these things are the examples of climate change. So because of this climate change and extreme weather events, so loss of life, loss of property is seen. So because of this, it is the responsibility of government to take some enough steps. Not only government of India, but even all other countries, they have to collectively take some steps to control this climate change because it is not a national issue, it is a global issue. So for this what India is demanding. So all these things are given here and we are going to have this summit soon on November 30th. So because of this ahead of this uh, COP28, so we are talking about so what are the demands of India. And here you can see one more article that is deep fake, deep fake alarm challenges. An artificial intelligence shadow booms over the entertainment industry. So here you have to understand what is this uh, deep fake. 
so what is this deep fake and you have to see some examples so what is the impact on society so what are the challenges okay so all these things are very important and this topic is extremely important from your science and technology which comes under gs paper 3 clear and now let us move on so here you can see this article that is open court hearing sought on same sex marriage review plea so actually many petitions were filed in supreme court regarding whether the same sexual marriage they are legal or illegal in our country whether we can legalize the same sex marriage or not so actually this petition which went to supreme court earlier also so earlier also so the same petitions which were filed in supreme court at that time supreme court said that it is not the work of judiciary but if the law which is came up by judiciary uh, sorry legislature then we will be saying whether it is constitutional or not so without any law how can we say that so and so thing like legalizing of homosexual marriage is is correct or not so we are not going to say that it is a work of legislature and legislature needs to come up with a law and later on we are going to interpret the law so this is the thing which said by supreme court earlier and now because of continuous pressure on supreme court the supreme court agreed to look into the request for an open court hearing of a petition of a petition to legalize same sexual marriage that is homosexual marriage marriage between women and women and as well as men and men so this is about this topic and here you have to see like what is the meaning of homosexual marriage so it is not legal in india right but in which countries it is legal in which countries it is legal and what will be the advantages if you are legalizing and what are the disadvantages or we can say like what are the concerns so all these things are important and in this page news page first important article here is mg narega's audit crosses 50 percentage local bodies in just six states so here you have to focus on this mg narega scheme so mg narega stands for Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. So under this, government is providing 100 days of guarantee employment. So government is providing 100 days of guarantee employment. That is not in that is not in urban areas, but it is in rural areas. So in rural areas, they are providing unskilled work. They are providing unskilled employment that too for 100 days for sure in rural areas. So this scheme which is also helpful for attaining of some sustainable development goals. For example, no poverty or zero poverty. It will be addressing poverty issue. And it will be addressing hunger. Poverty. Hunger. And even that will helpful for increasing of standard of living of people. Right. And that will also help for increasing of dignity. And even whenever people are getting salary. So they will go to the market and they will place demands for the goods and services. That will also help for revival of our economy. And even under this program, the asset will be created. Assets will be created in the rural areas. For example, laying of roads. For example, educational uh, organizations, for example, like primary schools, primary healthcare centers, etc. Right? So, in this way, it is not only providing the employment opportunities, but even it is trying to impart the skill in the rural people. So, the issue here is, so the issue here is, there is delay in, in paying the wages to the people. And here, Lok Sabha which play, sorry, here with local bodies or we can say Gram Sabha, Gram Sabha and local bodies, they will play a very important role in enrollment process, 
in enrollment of people into this MG Narega scheme. Okay, so these all things are very important and please let me know under which ministry it comes. And next topic is studying sea ice amid penguins and the southern lights. Okay, so you might have came across with this word called as Ostia borealis. Right? So, you, you might have come up with this concept called as Northern Lights and Southern Lights. So, normally what happens here is, so this is our earth, so this is equator and here we have 90 degrees north and here we have 90 degrees south. So, normally at this region in this polar region, in this northern pole and southern pole, normally we can see lights like uh, laser color lights like green color, yellow color, blue color, red color, orange color lights that are seen. So, those are, those are called as lights. So, normally that is seen in the southern pole and northern pole that are called as northern lights and southern lights. That is Borealis and Australis. So, here this article says that whenever we are studying the sea ice and the penguins and southern lights, so we saw that because of this climate change, So, because of this climate change, melting of ice is seen. So, because of melting of ice, it is impacting the biodiversity which is present in that region, especially the penguins. Okay, especially the penguins. So, because of this, even melting of ice, it is also impacting the southern lights phenomena. Okay, so here you have to open your NCRT. And you have to see this concept of northern lights and southern lights. And please let me know in the comment box. Ostia arenalis and Ostia borealis. So if you see in this world page, there is nothing much important. So here in this business page, you can see two important keywords. So first one is SEBI and next one is artificial intelligence. So actually our Prime Minister's economic advisor, he calls for regulation of artificial intelligence. Okay, we have to go for regulation of artificial intelligence. So here he also says that yes, we have to focus on even SEBI. So here you have to focus on some important facts regarding this SEBI, like when it was established and what are the functions and what is the role of this SEBI. Okay, so that is very important. And these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. And now let us see notes. Okay. So first topic it is about role of governor. Role of governor. And we are talking about this topic since 15 days. And one more thing here is on Sunday we are going to come up with life. So the topic is Israel-Palestinian conflict. So many students they said to cover this Israel-Palestine issue. And after covering this Israel-Palestine issue, I will be also covering the governor issue as well. So some students asked me to cover governor issue and some students asked me to cover this Israel-Palestine. But majorly um, number of votes which are high for this uh, Israel-Palestine issue. So because of this, I am going to come up with a detailed analysis of this Israel-Palestine issue now Okay, on the coming Sunday. So please do join the session. It will be around in the morning session only because... At 7 o'clock, I will be having main Sanskrit class and morning I have Hindu. So, in between these two, we will be having that class that will be around 11 to 12. Okay. So, here the context says that Supreme Court has laid down the law that a governor in case he withholds assent to the bill should send it back to state legislature as soon as possible. Okay, so whenever bill which is coming to the governor to assent, so if he want to withhold, so as soon as possible he have to send the bill back to the house. So if assembly reiterates the bill with or without amendments, then at that time here, that means whenever assembly is passing the same bill with or without amendments, then governor will be having no choice, then he have to give assent at that time. So if you see details, it says that the November... In November 10, judgment released on Thursday. On November 10th, a judgment of Supreme Court released. It is based on the petition filed 
by Punjab government against governor's action to withhold the crucial bills. At that time, Supreme Court came up with a verdict. And this verdict which was also very much significant for this Tamil Nadu case as well. So what happened in Tamil Nadu? Tamil Nadu passed 10 bills in state legislative assembly. And those bills are sent for governor. Governor. But he is not giving the assent. He is withholding assent. So what happened? There is no choice with the state. So now again these bills are repassed and again they sent to the governor and even in our living document that is constitution of India article 200 and article 201 they didn't talk about what if the bill repassed which are withholded by governor. So again Tamil Nadu government filed petition in Supreme Court and Supreme Court said that and now that bill will be act as a money bill and here president uh, governor of the state who is having the no power for withholding then at that time he have to give the assent so this is the thing which happened in state of Tamil Nadu that is the thing which mainly said here that's it nothing more nothing less so court said that governor who chooses to withhold a bill without doing anything further would be acting in contravention of the constitution. So actually here governor he is a central agent or central government's representative in state. He is not even elected head of state. Yes or no? Yes, right? So here, so here he should not do the things like withholding of the crucial bills which passed by state legislative assembly. So if this kind of things or steps taken by the governor, then it will undermine the fundamental principles of constitutional democracy. Okay, so this is the thing which said by court. And now let us see next topic, it is about pneumonia. So this article is important from your science and technology which comes under GS paper 3. So title says that World Health Organization asked China for information on rise in illness and that to rise in pneumonia clusters. Okay, and this article is important from your science and technology and even from your international relations point of view. So, if you see context, it says that World Health Organization says it has made an official request to China for information about a potentially worrying spike in respiratory illness. So there is increased respiratory illness and even there is increased number of pot uh, potential pneumonia cases in China. So what happened WHO cited that there is unspecified media reports and global infectious disease monitoring services they are reporting that clusters of undiagnosed pneumonia in children in northern China. So there are many uh, many things which are mainly saying that yes in the northern part of China there is increased number of pneumonia cases. So scientists have said that the situation warranted close monitoring and but they were not convinced that the recent spike in respiratory illness in China signaled to start a new global outbreak. So China is, uh, is not accepting for that. So here in this context, you have to know some facts regarding this pneumonia. So what is this disease all about? Pneumonia, it is one of the leading cause of death in children in worldwide. So worldwide, pneumonia is one of the important leading cause of death in children. So pneumonia kills an estimated 1.4 million children. So 1.4 million children they were killed under age of 5 years every year. So this is one of the serious illness that I can say even, even it is more severe or dangerous than AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis combined. So this pneumonia is caused by the group of organisms like virus. It may be caused by virus, it may be caused by bacteria, it may be caused by fungi. Right? So pneumonia can be prevented by immunization. So we can use vaccines. 
and we can go for using of adequate nutrition and we can address environmental factors so that we can control incidence of pneumonia and pneumonia can be treated with antibiotics but around 30 percent of children with pneumonia receives the antibiotic they need but not all only 30 percent are getting this antibiotics so if you're talking about the symptoms of pneumonia there will be rapid difficulty in breathing and if you have observed any children who are suffering with the pneumonia so here at least here you can see like it is going into deep and the stomach will be moving upside and downside like this okay and because of difficulty in breathing next one is they will be having cough and they will be having fever chills loss of appetite wheezing wheezing is nothing but if you keep your ear on the chest so you'll be keys and you'll be hearing like kr kr sound so you'll be seeing like a sound while you're breathing so it is common even in the other viral infections as well and next topic it is about potential rivals come together to hold kambala so the key word here is kambala so now let us see this topic in detail so context says that keeping aside ideological differences political rivals in karnataka here now the congress and bjp governments so they have come together to organize this kambala event so even we are going to have this kambala event that is going to be held in karnataka so this event is scheduled for november 25th and november 26th so here we have to see some facts regarding this kambala so kambala it is a traditional buffalo race or buffalo taming event that is done in paddy fields so paddy fields will be filled with slush and mud which is generally take place in the coastal karnataka region especially in odp and dakshin kannada region from november to march traditionally this sport is sponsored by local tuluva landlords and households in coastal districts and these tuluva people they are an ethnic group and they are native to southern part of our country and they speak this Tulu language. So during this race, racers they will try to bring the buffaloes under control by holding their reins tight and whipping them. And if you see the tradition here, so it, this tradition, Kambala was non-competitive and buffalo pairs they raced one after another in paddy fields. It was also observed as thanksgiving to God for protecting the animals from diseases. So this is a tradition that is doing. But here if you see regarding this bull taming, we have some concerns. So what are those concerns? What are those concerns? The first one here is animal activist. So animal activists, they criticize this sport and they argue that the Kambala involves the acts of cruelty on animals. So they include the acts of cruelty on animals which are not physiologically suited for racing. Okay, if they are not suited for racing and if you take for racing, that will have some impact on their health. And even they are being beaten in the race. And even according to one important act that is prevention of cruelty to animals act of 1960, the act prevents practices which involves unnecessary pain to the animal amounting to the cruelty. That will also create unnecessary or like they will be getting a lot of pain because of beating in the race. And next topic it is about 5 trillion economy. For whom? So this article is very important because so recently in Chhattisgarh, our Prime Minister, he went for election campaign. So that campaign he announced that we are going to extend this. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. And under this scheme here, it will provide 5 kgs of food grains free every month to beneficiaries of National Food Security Act by 5 years. And the important aim of government is to provide food security. No one should sleep with hungry. So this means about 80 crore Indians, they will still be receiving free food grains to starve off hunger in 2028. So to eliminate hunger, yes, government is coming up with this scheme. 
and even he also said that we are going to be the 5 trillion dollar economy and India will stand like world's third largest economy. So here you have to see what is the road map for the government to make this dollar 5 trillion economy. So first one here is government if it want to achieve this 5 trillion dollar economy. So we have to focus on macro level growth. Okay, We have to focus on macro level growth and we have to focus on even welfare at micro level not only macro level but even the micro level also we have to focus and we have to focus on promoting digital economy and financial technology technology enabled development energy transition climate actions all these things are very important that we have to focus if you want to improve our economy and what are the steps already taken the first and the foremost thing here is so reforms need to be undertaken so already government came up with introduction of gst goods and service tax in 2017 and also government came up with this ibc and sebi and government came up with significant reduction in this corporate tax rate and government came up with a lot of schemes like make in india standard stand up india and the skill india etc startup india and government recently also came up or extended this PLI scheme that is production link incentive scheme to lot of sectors and even government is trying to focus to increase capital investment as well so government has focused on capex that means nothing but capital expenditure led growth strategy that means whenever government increases its spending Government is increasing its spending in infrastructure development. Obviously, it will lead to the increasing of our growth and development of the country. And next one is even in our union budget 2023 to 2024, it has taken some steps to sustain high growth of India's economy. And we are focusing that yes, there is a need of increase in capital investment. There is a need of increasing of capital investment and direct capital investment by center is also complemented by grants and aids. So states need to get grants and aids so that they will be also going for development projects in creation of capital assets. And next topic is COP28, India's equity demand. So this article is important from your sign uh, environment and ecology. And even when you are moving towards this non-renewable to renewable energy sources, which is a part of this climate change emissions, yes, that is important from your science and technology. So if you see the context, it says that there is an almost re linear relationship between global warming and cumulative carbon dioxide emissions. That means whenever there is increased carbon dioxide emissions, So whenever there is increased carbon dioxide emissions to atmosphere, it's automatically it will lead to global warming. So global warming is related to this carbon dioxide emissions. <coughs> okay, because it is one of the greenhouse gas that will lead to greenhouse effect. So this greenhouse effect leads to global warming. So here UNFCCC that is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in 1990 noted that per capita emissions in developing countries they are still relatively low. That means if you are if you are dividing total emissions by population you are taking total emissions and if you are dividing population total population then we will be getting per capita emissions. So here as you all know that India is the third most largest greenhouse gas emitter. So first one is USA, second one is China and third one is India. But if you see the per capita emissions, so per capita emissions is very low in India. Okay, so this is one cause of concern. And the convention which also recognizes the common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities. That means, so who are releasing more emissions, they have to contribute to the financial assistance to the developing countries 
and least developed country that is called as common but differential responsibilities and the principles which also have been reaffirmed that paris agreement that we came up in year 2015 so it is saying that we have to decrease global warming by 1.5 degree centigrade to 2 degree centigrade if you are if you are comparing with this 1990s that is pre industrial levels but it has not been done so it is a failure so if you see some more details it says that according to intergovernmental panel on climate change that is ipcc 6 assessment report it says that every 1000 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions causing 0.45 degrees of rising of global temperature and this data is very very important please make a do it make, make a note of this data and if you see the term that is called as global carbon budget so that refers to maximum cumulative global anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions that means so the release of carbon dioxide emissions because of human actions from pre industrial era to when such emissions reach net zero resulting in limiting global warming to a given level with a given probability so what is this global carbon budget so global carbon budget is nothing but so we have to achieve this net zero okay net zero and we have to achieve to limit this global warming so this combination of net zero and the limiting of global warming is called as global carbon budget and remaining carbon budget indicates that how much carbon dioxide could still be emitted okay so here yes we can't avoid industrialization so if you want to go for development now developing countries and least developed countries they have to focus on manufacturing sector yes they have to release this carbon dioxide emissions so here still after achieving this global carbon net zero so how much amount of this carbon dioxide can be released that is called that is also within a specified limit so that should be released in a specified limit so that we can control this global warming and even this united nation fcc and paris agreement which came up with acknowledgement of differential responsibilities so as a developed countries they have responsibility so we have developed countries they already released whatever they can into atmosphere okay when they came up with industrialization so now we have developing countries and we have least developed countries so we have developing countries and least developed countries so now these countries they are going with this industrialization now so they are going with this industrialization now so these countries they are saying that because of this climate change yes we are facing global warming we should not release carbon dioxide emissions so how for this is correct so whatever they can they already released but now they are not allowing the developing and least developed countries to release carbon emissions so because of this we came up with this concept of differentiated responsibilities now because of the emissions which already done by these developed countries earlier so they have to provide finance and they have to provide technology for this developing and least developed countries that finance is called as climate finance and we need transfer of technology so that these countries they can move from non renewable energy sources towards renewable energy sources that will decrease emissions into atmosphere and if you see here india despite having a lower per capita carbon footprint compared to the developed countries we are facing some challenges because of depletion of global carbon budget so we are going to be affected and the country's developmental needs and poverty eradication efforts they will be hindered because whenever we are going for this manufacturing sector then only we can address the problems of poverty hunger unemployment etc so here because of this manufacturing sector so we can release more amount of carbon dioxide emission so that it is hindering the development so we can't achieve this sustainable development goals and the developed countries they haven't meet promised financial commitments impacting climate mitigations in developing nations okay and what are the promises which were made by the developed countries they had not been met 
लाइक फिनेंशियल कमिटमेंट्स और लाइक टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर एवरीथिंग सो नाउ इंडिया वॉन्ट्स टू टेक सम प्रो एक्टिव स्टेप्स बाई इस्टाब्लिशिंग अलायसेज सो ऑलरेडी वी केम अप विद अलायसेज लाइक आई एस दैट इज इंटरनेशनल सोलर अलायंस विच इज़ अ प्रोग्राम बाई इंडिया एंड फ्रांस टूगेदर एंड मेनी कंट्रीज यूर जॉइन इन दिस एंड इवन वी केम अप विद दिस लाइफ मिशन एज वेल दैट इज सस्टेनेबल लाइफ स्टाइल सो दीज आर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स दैट वी ऑलरेडी केम अप एंड आई एंड नाउ आई वॉन्ट टू शो अबाउट दिस कोर्स दैट इज एथिक्स लाइव ऑनलाइन कोर्स सो ऑलरेडी इट हैड बीन स्टैंडर्ड ऑन ट्वेंटी एथ नवम्बर सो हियर वी आर कंप्लीटिंग एंटायर योर एथिक्स विद इन फिफ्टी हावर्स ऑफ लाइव क्लासेस सो एवरी डे द क्लास विल बी कंडक्टेड फ्रॉम सिक्स पी एम टू एट पी एम ऑलरेडी वी पोस्टेड टू डेमो वीडियोज ऑफ दिस लाइव एथिक्स क्लासेस इन यूट्यूब सो प्लीज डू वॉच दोज वीडियोज एंड प्लीज लेट मी नो यूर ओपिनियन ऑन दैट कोर्स एंड इफ यू रियल लाइक दैट डेमो वीडियोज देन ओनली यू कैन जॉइन द कोर्स so my promise is we are going to complete each and every sub topic along with the examples so i will be giving you lot of examples so that you can understand the concept okay and even we are focusing on how to write a means answer and as well as a case study of ethics and we are going to have the uh, means answer practice of this ethics and there will be even evaluation of your answers and if you are not attending the live class we are also providing the recorded classes as well and we are providing the notes that will helpful for improving of your marks and one thing for sure here is if you join this course and if you understand the concept and if you complete answer writing practice so i will ensure you that you will be going to get 130 plus marks in your ethics in upsc mains so this is a wonderful opportunity so please don't miss this opportunity and the cost here is 4500 rupees only and if you want to join the class so please con please contact me on this number 8074765513 so even this is whatsapp number you can call me on this whatsapp number as well okay so you can call or you can text me on whatsapp or direct call or else you can text me in telegram as well so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture and if you really like this class so hit the like button and don't forget to share this class to your friends and share about this course also in the social media platforms and don't forget to subscribe to this tatur science academy thank you so much for watching